criminal landlords and letting agents who exploit their tenants will be named and shamed on a new online database. The Mayor, Sadiq Khan, announced a new scheme today to help protect the two million renters in the capital. Initially, the database will list those prosecuted for housing offences in six boroughs. To talk more about this, I'm joined now by property expert Andrew Teacher. Now, first of all, let's just address the idea of rogue landlords. Is this a real issue for Londoners? I, I think it is, but it's important not to overplay it. I, I, it's, you know, we always turn on the CB in the evening or open up a paper at the weekend and see big, massive horror stories about rogue landlords and people living in squalor. But I think it's important to keep this in perspective, that this is really the minority, and there is a, there is a degree to which it can be seen to, to, to displace a lot of the, the positivity that is out there. I think today's announcement is a, is a welcome one, and Sadiq Khan has, has been doing a lot to improve life for London's renters, and, and he should be uh, applauded for that. But in reality, what's really going to make the change is incentivizing more professionally run rental developments, developments funded by long-term money, such as pension funds, things built for rent, where you can have a professional manager running these buildings almost a bit like a hotel with the same kind of service, the same kind of operations that can give people certainty of tenure, certainty that not going to be booted out if they complain, certainty that if they complain about the taps not working properly, someone can fix it rather than shout at them. These are the sorts of things that, that people want uh, and I think it's important to focus on how we get there and the solution isn't solely going to be making a, a big deal out of, of, of a few of the, 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 the minor issues. Now, if we focus on, on, on that, that section, like you say, it is a small section, but they're, they're people who are there will have been prosecuted. Do you think the people that on the whole live in those situations are people who have a choice? Because we're talking about you know, tenant, uh, uh, landlords who are often offering a very much reduced service because London is so expensive at the moment. Vulnerable people are the people who go into those places. It's a, it's a, it's a good point. It's a good question. And, and I think, again, the solution to that isn't going to be, isn't solely going to be cracking down this. I think we need to do it. I think it's a great thing to do. And yes, there should be more cracking down and, and more, you know, there should be more of these people locked up, frankly. Let's be blunt about it. But the, the reality of the situation is, is who's going to fund this? Who's going to police it? How are councils going to have the money to go and find these dodgy landlords and lock them up? It, there isn't the resource there. And I'd come back to, to really focus on how we can incentivize cash to build stuff. And you've got companies like Essential Living who have got a, a large development in, in Greenwich, Creekside Wharf. This is a, a scheme that's going to have a quarter of its units, a quarter of its apartment for discount market rents, so affordable rents. They've also got a development that's opening soon in Bethnal Green called Dressage Court. Again, it's a built-to-rent scheme. It's a scheme solely of rental apartments, a large chunk of which is going to be for affordable uh, renting uh, people that are affordable renting. And what that means is that if we can incentivize more of this stuff to be built, we can get more affordable stuff built as part of it. We can get more quality stuff built for people that have got the money to pay a market rent. And what that means for renters is they can have somewhere that's got certainty of tenure, so they're not going to be booted out. They can stay for three years. They can have one bill that includes all of their amenities and all of their utilities. And they can also have the freedom to use shared areas and fantastic amenity spaces to have dinner parties and all the sorts of things that renters in places like America have. And I think this is the sort of thing that Sadiq Khan has been making big inroads to in encourage. He's, he's set up uh, and, and been part of a lot of great work that's happening to encourage investment. And I think it's a, it's a balance between driving investment and also policing some of the bad people that are obviously out there. How do you incentivize that, though? How do you incentivize what you're describing as a fairer market for renters? Well, the way you incentivize that is by creating choice in the market. So, you know, as much as Sadiq Khan is a Labour mayor, he's obviously someone that has ruled out things like rent caps because he realises that things suggested like that by Jeremy Corbyn are a total nonsense when it comes to driving investment. Sadiq Khan obviously believes in, in driving private investment because he's been a big supporter of institutions such as pension funds coming into the housing market. And the way you incentivise a fairer market fundamentally is by looking at the vast swathes of public land we have such as old tube station sites owned by TfL or council owned buildings and looking at how we can wrap those things into housing. So rather than just flog off all these buildings, think, right, we've got council-owned buildings. How can we do joint ventures where a private company might
uh, come in, invest some money, build a building of rented apartments, the council can take some of the rent, the private developer can take some of the profits, and London's renters can have somewhere safe to live that's secure, that has lots of facilities to it. That is one of the solutions that I think we need to look at. And again, using the essential living example, they've got a development in North London above Archway Tube. The, the freehold of that is owned by London Underground. So that was a building, a vacant building owned by, by London Underground. It was costing money, nothing in it. It's been transformed into 118 apartments. And that's a great example of what Build to Rent can deliver. And I think in, in terms of Sadiq Khan's pledge to improve life for Londoners, it has to be a mix of both investment and cracking down on, on the nasty people that are out there. Okay, Andrew Teacher, thank you so much for joining us thank this evening. You. Now, a look at the national and international headlines after the break.